couldn't handle No one else could ever hold a candle Get ready for a battle Cause you know So I posted these photos to Instagram just a couple days ago on some lawn striping that I did in my front yard. There were a few questions on how exactly I made this pattern, how you do striping in general. So I thought today let's talk about how I did this pattern, how you might do something similar in your yard. Even if you don't have the real mower that I use, there's different ways that you can do it with just a regular rotary mower as well. So we've talked about it many times here on the channel, but if you're new, let's talk about how you actually get those stripes. So the first thing is most people think you need to cut at a different height or that it's different grass types or something crazy like that, but it's not anything like that. It's simply bending of the grass blades, that's it. So when you're going in one direction and then you're coming back in the other direction, the light is bouncing off of that grass and the light in the dark stripe is simply created from that light bouncing off of the grass blades. There's nothing else to it other than that. Now sure, there are there are certain grass types that do a better job. There are certain heights of cut that do a better job, but basically that is the simple answer. So especially if you have cool season grass like I do, it's known for striping well. And that's how I'm getting some of the great results that I'm getting because I have perennial ryegrass, which also does fantastic with striping. So it's been a couple years now since I completed my first full lawn renovation on the side yard here and I started real mowing. Now that same year here on YouTube, our friend Real Low Dad challenged me to a lawn striping contest. Now I still had bluegrass in my backyard at that point, but I wanted to put in something cool here on that new renovation that I did with a real mower. So these were the results of that time. The lawn was not super mature yet, but I did come up with a pretty cool checkerboard pattern. And then in the backyard, I decided to do sort of like a landing zone idea where I wanted it to look like if you were flying over my house there would be a landing zone right into the backyard. I was using my Time Master to do that in the backyard so it's a rotary mower and I was just pulling behind the striping kit that I have for that. Now I don't want to trigger real old dad here and try to bring up some bad memories for him so let's just not rub that in too much. But then this year a group of friends of mine kind of chat all things lawn throughout the year and I got challenged again for a striping contest. So it happens to be that this challenger has warm season grass and overseeds ryegrass on top of that. So the deal was it was going to be October 15th that we were going to reveal our striping so I wanted to really up my game this year and come up with a really cool pattern. So as you probably saw in my last video, Connor was here. He did some damage to my yard and also he put in a striping pattern that I wasn't really planning on so I had to plan around that a little bit but I got it done. So here's a quick shot of the result, the end result, and now let's talk about how I actually did this. So I wanted to do something similar with that landing strip theme to kind of pay homage to the first striping contest. So I decided that having the tree in my front yard was going to be sort of an issue because you didn't want to go around it and leave a bunch of weird stripes around the tree. So I figured I would make the landing strip grow right into the tree and I would start off my pattern right on the side of the tree so that I could get a straight line going right up against the tree. So I just started there. I didn't use any strings or anything to measure all this out. I just started on that edge of that tree and I started mowing a straight stripe as straight as I possibly could. From there, I wanted to do some triple stripes in here, but I didn't want it to be triples everywhere. I wanted the pattern to kind of be a variation where there were some single stripes in certain areas, there were some triples in some other areas. So for that landing strip, I wanted it to be dark, so I knew that I had to be coming towards the camera here and away from the tree in order for that stripe to be dark. So essentially what you have to do is you have to keep going over your same pattern in order to keep coming back and not ruining what you're doing there. So what I mean by that is I had to keep going over that initial stripe, coming back in the other direction before I was able to create another another lighter stripe going in the other direction once I was past the tree. So I hope that makes sense there. But you have to keep kind of going over your pattern that you've already done in order to make sure you don't screw up the stripes. So you don't also have to mow this every single time. Once you've mowed it once or twice, as far as the pattern goes, you can simply just roll along on your mower and you don't even have to have the blade on. So that's something that you can think about too. This is sort of called burning in of the pattern and that makes sure that it's going to be very visible and that the pattern that you want to use is going to have the best sort of light and dark color. I decided to go north and south over the pattern and sometimes this can kind of erase your original pattern in some ways. So it did make it a little lighter on the stuff that I just got down on the main section, but I wanted these stripes going the other direction just to kind of give something to the eye. So then the next day I went back out again and I did the exact same thing, except this time I went with the north and south pattern first. So I basically mowed that twice. And then I went with the main sort of pattern that goes towards the tree, the landing zone pattern. I did that probably three times on the second day. And again, this wasn't all mowing it, it was simply just rolling that pattern again. And from there, I think it gave it the right amount of blend of that north-south 
pattern and then the landing strip pattern and that's what we came up with so here's what it looks like never met a match i couldn't handle no one else could ever hold a candle get ready for a battle cause you know You're probably wondering, what did the Challenger do here? Well, here's a little look at the Challenger and how his stripes turned out. He did a big checkerboard pattern. He has the Toro Greensmaster, and this was mowed at three quarters of an inch. Mine was mowed at a half inch. For being a yard that's overseeded on warm season, I think he's got some great colors going, and he did some great striping as well. I just knew I had to up my game, and that's what I did. Well, so now you might be thinking, Ryan, you have this real mower. It has rollers on it. It's easy to roll in those patterns. I can't do that with my rotary mower. Well, actually I showed this summer and I've showed before on my Toro Time Master as well that there's these rollers that you can get that attach to the back of the mower and it sort of does the same type of concept here as I'm doing with my real mowers. It's simply rolling the grass and bending it over so that it's a light or a dark stripe. Now, if you're interested in that, you can check out my video from the summer on lawn striping. I just use a regular Honda push mower and these were the results that I was able to get with that just simply by rolling with this lawn striper that I have for the Honda. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I'll have a link in the description as well for that tool if you want to look at it. And it's almost the end of the season here for us cool season folks, but some of you down south who have overseeded rye, you could get some great stripes with a tool like that. Or also for those of you who still want to get some Halloween stripes going before we get to Halloween this year, that's a good option as well. So I hope that explained today how I made this pattern, how you can do some lawn striping in your yard as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Every day I walk by this sign in our living room, and I rarely pay attention to it. But lately as fall colors turn into leaves on the ground, I glanced at this sign recently and it reminded me of one of the most precious things that we often take for granted, time. My wife and I both love fall. She loves to decorate and embrace each season within our home. And I was born for cool days and even cooler nights. We both realized this year that soon the changing leaves will be gone, and the color is worth chasing. A few weeks ago, we left for what we might call our favorite place on earth. Not only is it in my home state, but it holds a very special meaning beyond just a place to visit. It's where we took our first mini vacation together. It's where we went on our honeymoon. It's where we go to get away. Many of the photos lining the walls in our living room are ones that I've taken from what feels like our home despite the fact that we don't live there full time. Except this time plans didn't really work out. The slight chance of showers turned into a rainstorm, turned into a dense fog advisory, turned into a hailstorm as we drove back south. 12 hours of total driving to see a few colors from mostly inside the vehicle. I did catch a couple of distant shots of this beautiful state park in northern Minnesota. but otherwise the trip would be considered a bust. However, you didn't think we'd give up that easily, did you? Loading stuff into a 
standard cab is not the easiest thing in the world. Enzo, you ready to go on an adventure? Your feet are on the dashboard My eyes on the road I always knew I'd get here I just thought I'd be alone Trees tie the skyline The sun is on the run There's no turning back now I had another plan. A trip to northeast Iowa where some spectacular views of the Mississippi are found near the Iowa-Wisconsin border. Having never been there before, I did the best scouting that I could by simply using Google Maps. In the Midwest, it's pretty easy to spot what I'm looking for on the map. I find trees, I go there. Now I love driving and I'm always up for a good road trip. Enzo was along for another adventure and he's such a great traveler. So we stopped at Pikes Peak State Park. You might be thinking that's in Colorado, but this variation in Iowa is directly along the river. I'm such a nerd for chasing light and how it can make or break an image. And in this forest of trees, it certainly did not disappoint. We noticed right away that obviously we weren't the only ones with the idea of spending a few hours taking in the scenery, but my wife joked that it appeared nearly everyone else there was retired. Hey, we've always been old in spirit. Ready to go check out that other spot? Yep. I'd found a little spot on the map while I was scouting locations that looked like we could get right down to the water. This winding trail led us down to an access point to the river. What looked like just a single stream opens up to so much more when you get above the trees. Despite being eaten alive by bugs, this was definitely a spot I'm glad we checked out. A few back roads later brought us to the town of McGregor. I love old towns and this is a place we'll definitely need to visit again.
And a few miles up the road in Marquette, we saw more of the same. The sun was setting on our trip. Eight hours of driving for about four hours of adventure. And maybe this all seems ridiculous on the surface. Leaves on the trees grow to be green again and return to colorful glory just one year from now. But remember that part where I talked about the sign on the wall in our living room? The way to love anything is to realize it may be lost. I needed that reminder that we can take life for granted. We're all losing precious hours and minutes and seconds. But it's the memories that we create that will last a lifetime. <laughs> 